Hello YouTube, welcome to my sort of beginner's guide type introduction to this game that I've discovered and really fallen in love with quite a little bit. It's called Tech Wars Global Conflict and it's free to play but it is pay to win. Believe me, I've had some fun and I've spent very little but I've got all the things that I wanted to get out of loot boxes mainly. The, uh, the daily reward system gives you cash you can use to buy loot boxes but it's kind of a drip feed unless you have premium time and it does give you a couple of days premium time over the course of I'll show you the daily bonuses I get two days premium time over the course of two weeks don't know if there's anything after two weeks maybe there is maybe there isn't anyway let's get on with what this is this is a scout mech I'd recommend starting in a scout mech because you can be you can choose your engagements in fact in this thing you have to choose your engagements if you just go into every fight you'll end up getting slaughtered straight away very quickly because you haven't got very many hit points but it's very very fast and you can get in and out quickly and the best part is you can turn invisible so right from the moment you get this mech it's very cheap to acquire and to excuse me craft and you can get one and you can just turn invisible uh, for about five seconds and the cooldowns only like 10 50 seconds i'm not sure what that is i'll check in a minute but whatever you can turn invisible and then you hit them with the sword and they die generally quite quickly obviously you don't do as much damage in the smaller mech with the sword as you would in a bigger mech i've tried it in a bigger mech it's a lot of fun they weren't expecting that but uh it's it's an ideal choice for this mech although a friend of mine is going to go with dual shotguns turning invisible. I'm not sure how that's going to work out because when I shoot when I'm invisible they figure out I'm there and they start shooting at where the gunfire is coming from so I don't know how that will work but anyway I've got it with the saber and a little machine gun. I don't use the machine gun hardly I just use it for targeting people for the airstrike which is the main power that this faction gets. I'm not going to be covering the American mechs and I'm not going to get into how the Russian faction in this has overpowered mechs and it possibly is a game for enjoying beating up Americans I don't know I'm not saying that at all nobody said that nobody said that anyway on the back you may have noticed is a big backpack that's a self repair unit now that was quite expensive to acquire the blueprint and to craft but it was worth it because I've got a good one and <laughs> it the only other option for the back for the shoulder unit is a missile launcher and I'm not engaged in shooting combats very much and don't need the missile launcher as much as because it hasn't got very many hit points the repair module is very effective on it if you get my meaning it wouldn't be although it would be monstrous to put one of those repair modules on a melee destroyer but I haven't tried that yet Anyway, I recommend you get one of these to start with. Uh, you won't get one at gold rank unless you're extremely lucky straight away. But luckily, as you level up, you keep the level ups for the class of mech. So if you acquire a better mech, you won't lose your level ups by replacing the mech you've got with the better mech. If you understand. The schemes in the top right are basically uh, just a set of bonuses that you can acquire in a, in a nice tidy little unit. It's like the CPU of the mech, I suppose and um, there's only a small chance of crafting or getting an elite class quality one but uh, uh, and the, I don't mean but I mean and the, uh, the bonuses are randomized on creation so I've got a few scheme sixes to go in my powerful mechs uh, these two are unused at the moment because they boost laser damage and I'm not using lasers at the moment I will get a mech eventually I suppose that uses lasers and that's why I'm keeping them around and I've got lower schemes when I'm leveling up mechs as well. I've kept my hand-me-downs basically for that slot. Anyway, let's get on to the bigger stuff. I'm going to get on to the mech that I started with. And this is the highest level so far, the destroyer, which is the heaviest you can go without being the Titan, which I have another video of. And I've dis already discussed the, the way the Titan works. He, get enough XP and you can spawn one but we're not looking at the Titan this is the destroyer there's just so many options for the destroyer you can even put the melee weapon on it lasers shotguns two flavors of machine gun 
There are, oh, there's also rail guns, but I haven't got them because I wasn't interested. I'm happy with these big dirty cannons. And it gets the shoulder missile launcher for extra damage. It also, its special ability, instead of turning invisible, is to fire a missile out of its chest. Which does a lot of damage on impact. It fires in a straight line. And uh, everyone gets the airstrike. Uh, the American counter to the airstrike is an armor buff, which is only very handy if they're working as a team, they're timing it right, and they're running and cross crossing the paths in front of your fields of fire to confuse your targeting. But the Americans, the people who play as Americans, because you can own both types of mechs, but you can only play with one type of mech at a time because of the way the, the PvP game selection works. I've got an American mech, but I haven't tried it yet because for the most part they get pummeled over and over and over again and I can illustrate that if we look at the leaderboards for matches win-loss ratios as you can see there are some ridiculous win-loss ratios at the top 108 for 3 I'm there at number 2 197 for 6 losses I've lost 6 matches and I've played over 200 games and that's because I only play as the Russian faction there's, there's something going on with the balance here I'm not saying it's not fun I'm not saying it's not fun, but uh, I haven't had the gall or the balls to play as an American mech yet. Anyway. Destroy has lots of options. Because of its extra survivability, you'll be able to achieve daily targets more effectively than you can in some of the other mechs. And I can show you some of the other mechs on the... the uh, the blueprints I've got here for them. Mechs that I haven't got, basically. I haven't got an A5 Razor or an A2 Fisher, which are the two Stormtroopers. I'd quite like a Razor because it's a bit beefier than the Fisher. The Fisher's a laser boat. It's got a, a native buff for the laser damage, and it's the mech you start with. It's the starting mech. The Razor is quite expensive to craft. I haven't got one yet, that's why. Uh, drops a mine, and ah, it works in conjunction with a particular grin like mortar-type shoulder unit. It's got a special ability that only works if you fit that weapon, and I have, that's why I want to try that. that. It's like a dedicated artillery mech. Very nice. That's the destroyer. The scout. There are two scouts. The scout I haven't got is an aerial dual gun wielding machine. That's basically the size of it. A bit John Wicky. Uh, the technician is a healer bot. Again haven't got round to owning or trying one of them I very rarely see them on the battlefield although you do see the mech for the Americans quite a lot because that can drop turrets although it's really not that useful uh, <laughs> like any of their stuff the destroyer and the scout for the uh, the Americans again they they just seem to be the strongest classes across the game the last mech I've got in my selection is as I've mentioned already the Titan which you only get after you've earned a certain amount of XP in the game and then you can spawn it and it helps if you know what you're doing because you've got a huge hit point bar compared to everybody else on the field unless there are other titans about so there comes a point in the fight where you're going to need to leave to survive and if you can recognize that point you can go back to home base heal up come in and have another go uh, because you'll get lots of kills for every second during the fight you've got the potential to get kills <laughs> because as soon as their buff runs out they're vulnerable so if you can keep that DPS up and time the bursts of your area effect abilities for when they're, they're running out of their buff or they're just spawning in and they haven't got their buff yet back yet you know if you can time it just right and if they're stupid enough to keep spawning on the same spot right in front of you as well that's happened a lot in the past like this is a new game and I think there are a lot of kids playing it so I should perhaps be a bit more forgiving because <laughs> when people are being predictable uh, you can exploit it now I haven't got any of the I've got some videos of people being a bit silly with that, but sometimes it was it was silly, <laughs> and I, I regret I didn't have the videos running when I recorded that when I when that was when I played that. 
shall we have a go? Yeah, I think so.